Welcome to A State of Sight. I'm Isaac Porter and this is your update in ophthalmology and eye care. And today we have a very special episode as we have been invited to do a guest vlog for Keratoconus Group. So, uh, like you may guess, uh, we're going to talk about keratoconus and how we treat our patients with keratoconus. So first, fortunately, many patients with keratoconus can be treated with just glasses or contact lenses. Uh, this is great if it gives a solution for them, but probably the most important thing is making the diagnosis. Then, once we know if they actually do have keratoconus, we monitor them for any signs of progression. If it looks like the keratoconus is worsening, their cornea is becoming steeper, then we recommend for our patients to have collagen cross-linking. So here in the U.S. now it's only available for investigational use or in studies since it's not FDA approved. Uh, at that time that it is approved, we expect it will be more widely available and covered by insurance companies, but now in the United States we have more difficult time than other places of the world getting our patients treated with collagen cross-linking. Uh, it's a great procedure, there's been great evidence for it, and it looks like that it does a great job of stopping or at least slowing the progression of keratoconus. So if this continues to progress or if our patients are not good candidates for collagen cross-linking, if the contact lenses and glasses don't work anymore to help improve the vision, then we may need to proceed to corneal transplantation. So there are two primary types of corneal transplantation available for keratoconus. Uh, the first choice that we like to use, if it's possible, is deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. With this, we substitute all but the inner layers of the cornea to um, give the person a donor cornea that is um, round and with a good thickness to help normalize their surface. So if this is not possible, we may need to do a full thickness corneal transplant where we replace all the layers that we remove in the central zone of the cornea. Uh, now with this, there's a recovery period and it may take six months or a year or even longer before we can get some of the sutures out from the transplant and then get these patients back into a contact lens that can get them the best vision that they can have. Uh, like I said, first we'll try for the DALC or the deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty because since we preserve the inner layers with that procedure, there is less chance for rejection and the eye may be stronger and more stable moving forward. Uh, so, if you have any questions about how we treat our patients with keratoconus or if you have keratoconus and wonder what may be good options for you, please post. We'll be happy to answer them and we look forward to seeing you again soon next time on A State of Sight.